Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. Right, <laughs> Wednesday morning here in Australia, and last night was super brutal. I mean, Bitcoin literally was down at sort of twenty nine thousand dollars. I remember seeing it and going, "Good lord, this is really, really bad." But what we can see over here is it had a V shaped recovery quite quickly. Now, you know. Things are still looking absolutely horrific for the altcoins. Really, really bad, unfortunately. But, you know, Bitcoin, it really is just trying to shake people out at the moment. So, again, you know, I'm not selling my Bitcoin, period. I don't care what the price goes down to, really. Like, yeah, I will sell once it goes above 100000 And I'm not going to sell all of it. I'm just going to sell some of it. Uh, until then, yeah, won't be doing it. Same with Ethereum. Uh, hurting at the moment. Uh, you know, I bought some uh, at 2000 sort of 100 but again, I bought most of my Ethereum way back when it was more like sort of 200 and sort of $50. I bought more at around sort of the three and $400 mark, but predominantly sort of, you know, I think my average buy-in price for Ethereum, other than when I bought some at $2,100, was around about sort of $330. That was my average sort of buy-in price. So, yeah. Won't be selling any Ethereum anytime soon. Uh, and the altcoins, you know, again, I really think it's not that I don't think the altcoins can't go lower, but I think we've kind of seen the worst of it. So if I hadn't already sold, really for me, I'm just thinking, well, what's the point in selling right now? You know, more than half of my altcoins are still in the green anyway. But then I've got, you know, just a little bit under half of my altcoins uh, sort of at a loss. Some around 5%, some sort of, you know, 12 to 20%. And that's where most of them kind of sit, the kind of 20, 30% range. But I definitely do have a couple of altcoins that are down 60%. Now, the thing is, I don't have that much money in those altcoins for a start. So I'm really just not panicking. For me, uh, I'm just going to ride it out. Again, I still don't think we're in a bear market. I think we are in a bearish trend, still in an overall uh, upwards trend. Uh, and again, macro, I'm bullish on cryptocurrencies. So yeah, I mean, that's it for me. Let's have a look. Bitcoin dominance, 46%, so starting to climb. Uh, ETH dominance uh, dropping 16.5%. And gas prices still somewhat relatively high. So, uh, you know, not high, high, considering where they've been, hundred and hundreds, but you know, back in the double digits getting up to nearly 30 we we're literally at uh, seven and eight only a few days ago so it shows there's a lot of things happening uh, i think a lot of that's probably to do with the uh, stable coins more than anything but you know we'll have to wait and see all right bit of a mixed bag there in the last 24 hours there is some green it's because you know the big dip that we had all right Let's have a look, has anything done well in the last 24 hours other than, you know, Bitcoin recovering sort of, you know, 3%. Right, live peer, there we go. Uh, made a move, 30%. Maker up 9%. Dogecoin up 8%. Filecoin uh, up 6%. Are these just kind of recovery bounces? Again, for me at the moment, uh, I'm just very cautious when it comes to buying any of the altcoins. I'm not saying I wouldn't buy any. You know, some of the ones I really like, as I so said before, some of the DeFi picks that I think have long-term value. Yeah, I might throw a couple of dollars, but really my money's just going into uh, mainly Bitcoin at the moment uh, and a little bit of Ethereum. All the other coins are just getting too hammered. Bitcoin really, while it's been super volatile, it's still basically staying between 30,000 and 40,000. So yeah. That's why I think that's where my uh, money is best put at the moment. I'm not offering you financial advice. I never do. I'm not a financial advisor. You do what's right by you. But we looked at the dollar cost averaging uh, into Bitcoin a while ago uh, and saw the value of that. So that's what I plan to do. Really, when I will ease up on my Bitcoin dollar cost averaging is when it's into price discovery. Basically, then I'll still be putting money into Bitcoin I just won't be putting as much into Bitcoin. I'll really be starting to focus on altcoins when you know Bitcoin's starting to break out uh, and move up because it runs first and then the altcoins follow. But again, I don't think we're quite there yet. I think Bitcoin's going to stay super volatile uh, for quite some time yet. You know, in saying that, all of a sudden tomorrow probably you know <laughs> uh, just starts to make its next move. Uh, hopefully to the upside, but you know it could be to the downside. But again, for me, Bitcoin's my play.
All right. We can see that there's really been one good move, a live pair, and then a couple other things have done all right. Single digit gains, nothing too crazy. And again, we'll take a gain over a loss any day, but we've got to have a look at these gains compared to the losses over the last seven days. Again, they might just be sort of, you know, recovery bounces before we see lower prices. Considering the market's down a bit, let's have a look. Has anything been really hammered in the top 100? Right, Elrond 12, we've got a lot of sort of 12, you know, double digit sort of losses here. Thought Chain, Kasama, Safe Moon, uh, OKB, NEM, Arweave, AMP, XRP, whew, down to 55 cents. And yeah, look, it's not pretty, is it? And particularly uh, when we're looking at the seven days, I mean, things just getting absolutely hammered. Hence why, you know, you've got to be really, really careful in this market. Now, I want to show you a tweet that I put out. It didn't get any love, so that's a bit sad and embarrassing. I'm going to show it anyway. All right. The current downturn in the crypto market is tough on pretty much everyone except the most seasons of veterans in this space. And you need to keep this in mind. If you can't handle the downside, which is, you know, the minus 90%, then unfortunately, you aren't deserving of the upside plus hundreds of percent. And unfortunately, that's the truth. Crypto is super volatile and it, you know, specifically shakes out the weak hands. You know, if you came in at the right time, and, and most people who came in last year are still in profit unless they got into some super speculative uh, altcoin that just got completely wrecked. But if you invested in uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, you know, last year, like, you know, anywhere from, you know, sort of prior September last year, you're still in profit yet you haven't lost anything it's only people that kind of invested after then that are probably hurting a little bit but again if you can't handle the minus 90 percent then unfortunately you just aren't deserving of the plus hundreds of percent that you will most likely see you know in the future it might take three years might take four years you know whatever it may be based on previous history no one's lost money being in you know bitcoin and ethereum for four years or longer literally no one Will it stay like that forever? Well, we don't know. No one can predict the future, but we generally just look at what's happened in the past to help try to predict the future because it's never exactly the same, but it's often eerie similar. So that's what you need to remember. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So this is what I'm talking about. It was brutal last night. I mean, boom, we got all the way down to... 28,565, you know, sort of thereabouts, let's say 28, sort of six thereabouts, but it was just a wick. And I, I was looking at it and it was like 29,500 and something. So we're literally down around about here. And I was like, oh God, that uh, is drastic. But look at this wick, <whistles> got bought up straight away. So again, we can see that 31,000 is still holding as really strong support. People are really happy to buy Bitcoin at 31,000. Uh, and again, look, just got pushed up so fast. And again, for me, I'm still buying it. So I'm not overly worried. Yes, the altcoins are getting absolutely wrecked at the moment. There's not really any altcoin that's not getting wrecked at the moment. It might do good for a couple of days, but then eventually it's just getting shattered because that's what happens when Bitcoin is super volatile. Not so much to the upside, like if Bitcoin's really starting to pump upwards, Altcoins will bleed a little bit, but they'll also, you know, go up with it. They'll get naturally dragged up with it. But when Bitcoin is volatile to both the upside and the downside and the upside and the downside and upside, and it's just chop soaring like this, altcoins just get wrecked because people aren't sure what the market's going to do. Whereas if Bitcoin's just, you know, volatile to the upside, you know, a lot of money goes into Bitcoin, but it naturally drags all those altcoins up. And we're not seeing that. Likewise, if Bitcoin is super volatile to the downside, then it drags all the altcoins down as well. So that's why I mainly just focus on the Bitcoin chart. It really is going to tell me where the market's going to go. Within reason, it doesn't exactly tell me, but we've just been in this range for you know a long time. And again, this is back in December last year. This is where Bitcoin was 27,000. That's what I'm saying, December 30th. So we can basically say sort of any time before New Year, last year if you bought bitcoin or you know ethereum you're in profit and still even a number of altcoins as well because like i said 
more than half my altcoins are still in profit, but I've got about half of them. They're the ones that I've bought later that are just really getting wrecked at the moment. But I still like the prices. But again, we were ranging between sort of 27,000 to 41,000 for basically a month. From the 30th of December right through to what's this, the 8th of February, to 8th of February. So a month, we were ranging. And again, it was even more sort of, well, it wasn't as volatile. It was just up, up, down, up, down. And this is just really just jigsawing all over the place. But we're still within that range, hence why I'm not like bearish at the moment. You know, it doesn't mean I couldn't turn bearish. And again, it's really this kind of level here that I'm watching for, 28,000. If Bitcoin goes below 28,000, and with proper closes, not just, you know, some random wicks or even one close, but then shoots back up here, then yes, I'll start to get bearish. But if I don't see that, as long as Bitcoin's just kind of, you know, I don't care how chop sorry it is around here, it'd be horrible for my alts, but I'm just continuing to buy Bitcoin and I'll be preferably trying to buy it when it's to the lower side rather than the higher side of this. But even that can be pretty hard to pick on, it, pick on any given day. So for me, I don't think we're in a bear market yet. It's definitely just a hard time to be in crypto though. All right, moving on, a couple of interesting stories. And again, this makes me think, you know, how can people be too bearish? Scary, yes, bearish, uh, you know, it. some of it feels a bit bearish, but not overly. PayPal and Visa will participate in a blockchain capital-led strategic partnership after taking part in a $300 million funding round. What do PayPal and Visa know that we don't know? Do you see they are like overly concerned by the price? Now, you got to remember, they're not buying cryptos here. They're setting up, um, you know, the platform to start putting it out to the, you know, the wider public. So it basically says to me that even they see mass adoption is coming and they're not really worried about the price of Bitcoin and all the rest of it at the moment. Because in the end, I mean, they're only going to really sell it. Uh, uh, and allow other people to use it so they don't have to worry about that kind of price fluctuation, uh, price fluctuation too much. But it says that there's that much demand for it that even though it's super volatile, they need to hurry up and get this stuff done and they're spending 300. Sorry, they're, uh, they're, you know, they weren't all of this 300 million, but they were part of this 300 million. So that to me says that this is legit, it's coming. Do you think PayPal and Visa and that wouldn't have spoke to regulators uh, and got into something that they think is going to be banned and all the rest of it? I don't think so. One of the biggest payment you know, uh, networks in the world, PayPal and even Visa, they of course would have been speaking to people. So again, this is what makes me bullish. I don't care about you know, how much lower it can go from here. Obviously, other than zero, that's going to hurt, but you know, that would just be the way it goes. Considering all of this is going on, I don't believe it's going to zero and I just continue to buy. All right, something else. So, although the SEC is yet to approve a Bitcoin ETF, in the States, Van Ex president said that the demand is high for such a product. And again, you know, the SEC has knocked back, you know, Bitcoin ETF after Bitcoin ETF after Bitcoin ETF. This is the first time where they've said, all right, hang on a minute. Let's put it out there. Let's get some feedback from some people. So they've let the public come out and make uh, their, you know, sort of informed decisions on what they get, uh, sort of want surrounding the crypto space. Now, again, you can look at it a few ways. You know, does that then say that, you know, they don't understand Bitcoin? You know, that's a possibility, but I think the SEC probably do understand it. I'd say they've been looking at it for a while, considering they've had, you know, numerous applications for Bitcoin ETFs over the years. I think it would be more just they want to see where the public is at because they don't want to approve an ETF uh, for Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies if the wider population is really just super against it. Now, unfortunately, it's taking a big massive hit at the moment. So there could be, you know, some people who've got burnt going and saying, oh, we can't have an ETF like this because it's, you know, just going to wreck people. That's something that we need to keep in mind. But again, just the fact that they're now putting it out there to the public tells me that we're getting closer to one being approved. Again, this, you know, the volatile nature of it at the moment uh, might mean it you know, doesn't come this year and we still might be a few years away. But considering every other time they've just knocked them back and now they're you know, letting the public have a say, 
lets me know that we are getting closer and closer to one of those happening. Again, how can I be you know, overly bearish when things like this are happening? Last but not least, so I spoke about ICOs and getting into new projects and how I got burnt. And this is one of them I got burnt in. So the SEC is still going after those 2017 Ethereum ICO tokens. The agency has settled charges with the creators of LokiCoin, which took in $7.6 million in ETH via a 2017 initial coin offering. So I got into uh, this and you know the price just absolutely tanked uh, and has never recovered, uh, not even remotely. Uh, and I think it might have been John McAfee was uh, pumping one of the, pumping this as well. I'm not sure. I know I got into one that he was pumping. I'm just not sure if Loki Coin was one of them. So it says here, after slapping Block One with a twenty-four million dollar penalty in two thousand and nineteen, after Block One had raised four billion, so twenty-four million is nothing, uh, and its offering uh, of EOS, and then nipping at the one point two billion dollar Telegram ICO. Uh, in 2020, the Securities and Exchange Commission has gone back to picking off smaller projects that are on life support. I mean, Loki was never coming back. They weren't doing anything with it, so I'm, I'm all for this. The agency today charged Loki Inc. and CEO John Wise with fraud and conducting an unregistered security sale of Loki Coin in 2017 and 2018. Loki and Wise have settled the charges and, according to the SEC, agreed to destroy their tokens, remove them from exchanges and never offer digital asset securities again. Possibly a good idea. They must also pay $7.6 million, or the value of the Ethereum tokens they received for the sale, as a civil penalty. So again, this is why I'm, I'm, I'm just very hesitant to jump. You know, there's ICOs and all these kind of things coming up out at the moment. It literally is like a repeat of 2017 in many ways. You know, there's been rug pulls and, you know, people coming up with, oh, it's due to the poor tokenomics. That means you didn't think about it. Your tokenomics were crap. How is that anyone else's fault other than yours? And then they're like, oh, you know, a declining market. Well, did you have a good product or not? Because if you've got a good product, and particularly you make all this money because people were piling into it, how have you managed to not, you know, forecast that there's going to be downtimes? That's just, you know, completely poor form by those people. And it just says, you know, to me, our total rug pull. They were never in it for any other reason than to, you know, quickly get some money. You know, they weren't planning for the downsides and all the rest of it. They didn't plan, you know, their tokenomics right and all of a sudden they've, you know, taken off with a whole stack of money. And I think you'll find that the SEC will likely go after um, all those kind of projects, again, provided they're in the States and things like that. So, all right, a bit of a quick one for me. There's not really a whole lot going on. Uh, it's pretty ugly at the moment. But again, I just focus on Bitcoin. Bitcoin hasn't, you know, gone to sort of new lows. We haven't brought broken this support. Yeah, we've had a candle body that's come down and basically, you know, equaled where another candle body has closed. And we've got wicks that have come down lower than of late, but not down to pass these sort of, you know, previous resistance kind of support points. So unless we're going below sort of $28,000, uh, and again, not just random wicks, actual closes, uh, and again, not just one little close, and we kind of shoot back up to 32000 uh, I'm not not overly worried. And again, for me, I'm a long-term investor, so no matter what I'm holding, I simply don't sell until we get to you know new all-time highs and things like that. That's when I'll start to consider selling. And for me, I'm not selling any Bitcoin or at least any major, uh, I wouldn't even say major, but any real parts of my Bitcoin until we're kind of going to see, you know, 100,000, around about 100,000, I'll be happy to sort of take some profits. But until then, I just look at, right, you know, Bitcoin was 64,000 not that long ago. It's now down around 30, 32,000. I'm happy to buy because once it gets back to its old all-time all -time high, and I know it will do it, I just can't tell you exactly when, I'm doubling my money. And that doesn't go for the, you know, if Bitcoin goes lower, then I'm increasing uh, my profit uh, when it finally gets back to its old all-time high and I bought you know a majority of my Bitcoin under thirty thousand dollars anyway way under thirty thousand dollars I've only bought a little bit of Bitcoin uh, in the kind of 30s didn't buy any in the 40s whatsoever I think the highest I've paid so far is about thirty nine thousand 
Uh, and, you know, I was lucky enough that I got into some Bitcoin, unfortunately not enough. Uh, I'm, again, kicking myself. Got into some around about that kind of $6,000, $5,000 level uh, and more around kind of the $8,000 level. Again, you know, I had the money on the sideline and I was like just nervous. I thought it might go lower and yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hard to be on that game train at the moment, but if you were, congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market. And I'll see you next time.